<laughs> All right, welcome to the latest episode of Coleman Power Organic Fitness Podcast. And for those of you that are on YouTube watching this, there's now currently a butterfly just after entering the room. So if I seem distracted at any moment in time, blame the butterfly. Okay. Hope it doesn't land straight on the mic. So this week's episode is all about butterflies. No, it's not. It's more so <laughs> leaning towards uh, questions that I've got asked and I pulled together to make this uh, week's episode of four main topics. So I'll just run through the four main questions that we put. And if you want your question, either shout it out or plus want a cosign with your name inclusive, if that's what you want, you send me the messages either directly on Instagram, Coleman Power, on TikTok, Coleman Power, Organic Fitness, and also Facebook, Coleman Power. You can also send directly to my email, You pretty much my name, you can get me anywhere. And in on top of that, the questions are typically food-based, nutrition, training, and organic foods related. So foods to eat for type 2 diabetics is the first question. Then training I recommend for continued progress. And in on top of that, you have organic fruits and vegetables coming into season. I do love my fruits and vegetables. In on top of that, should I take a vitamin C tablet or supplement? Those are the four main areas. And we get straight on to question number one. So foods to eat for type two diabetes. So just to fill people in, diabetes is for those who haven't, I don't know enough about it just as of yet. I train a couple of, a number of people on the organic fitness program who have diabetes. So it's the lack of insulin being produced that helps glycogen, which is your body's main source of energy, being shuttled into your bloodstream. So inevitably, you can have foods that can inevitably help that. And that's what I recommend to people. So foods that prevent an insulin spike, okay, that is high GI foods. So foods that don't contain a lot of fiber, and contain a lot of sugar. And as a result of that, that is something that people can lean towards that have not only beneficial for diabetes, but it's also beneficial for people who don't want that spike because a spike in your blood sugar levels will never follow that at a crash and certainly lead to cravings. So foods that I recommend, complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates give you a slow release of energy because why? It takes time for them to be broken down as opposed to the simple carbohydrates. So just to give you examples of high uh, GI foods would contain a lot of sugar. So fruits, fruits and things I would recommend straight off the bat. Even tomatoes, which are so beneficial, and both fruits and tomatoes are things that I do recommend to people. But in this context, it's specifically related to people with diabetes and in particular type 2 diabetes. Other foods that can cause it are we call processed foods. Again, why? Because they're much more uh, easily be broken down and that means that a cleaner diet such as complex carbohydrates oats are a real sure breadwinner for breakfast and then making sure that you have some protein and healthy fats in that too why because protein and healthy fats don't have an effect as big an effect on your blood sugar levels as opposed to carbohydrates which leans me uh, a little bit closer towards other foods that are complex carbohydrates a sweet potato in this case over white potatoes just because they have the lower index, a lower um, increase in your blood sugar levels on that GI scale. In on top of that, then there's other things such as brown rice over white rice. This might seem really simple, but the whole thing about it is simple things done over a consistent basis give you extraordinary results. And that's a fact you can take throughout life. And I'm a firm believer in quotes. And those are the things that I, I recommend. And those are the things that I do myself, whether you have diabetes or not, the added advantage of these, such as the brown rice and the brown bread that I want to recommend next, is something that has fiber. Fiber is good for your gut health, so important for your overall immune system. And other things that I'm going to recommend is lifestyle habits. Lifestyle habits such as going, I suppose, towards going to places such that are healthier options. Okay, choosing the best things you can on a possible menu. And if I even on top of that, I recommend even cooking from scratch. Why? Because you know exactly what's in that. Start making your own breakfast, start making your own lunch. And as a result of that, making your own dinner too. Because you only have typically three main meals a day, which I recommend. And in on top of that, then I also want you to have higher protein and higher fats. Because carbohydrates, as we touched on, 
are the body's first source of energy and certainly are going to have an effect on your blood sugar levels. It's well worth noting that protein and fats have a minuscule, I even put it up as a post in my Instagram story. If you didn't check that out, send me a message and I'll send it over to you and pop it over to you directly. The thing about it is, I don't want people to demonize carbohydrates just because they can cause a spike in your blood sugar levels. It's the whole approach that tailoring foods to your needs, whether it be you have diabetes and or your fitness levels, you're looking to lose weight. I do get people to reduce down the carbohydrates and have higher protein and higher fats. Protein is something that's essential for the body and you can get it from all numerous different amounts of sources. So I'll just give you an example of for for this uh, individual that I'm currently training online, he's on organic mints, he's peppers, he's sprinkled with hemp seeds, and he's having beans. And that's later on in the evening for preventing him having high blood sugar levels going to bed. And that is just one example that's having low carbohydrates in that he's having healthy fats because he's having extra virgin olive oil in the pan, cooking a medium to low heat, having this own advantage of antioxidants. And there's the complete protein in the organic ground mints and then there's different vegetables such as garlic onions and beans beans can be also steeped overnight and something that i could have touched on here next there are toxins that can actually cause and symptoms of uh, diabetes so it's bpa and bpa is found in plastics and in tinned beans or any tinned items so that's another reason to always to go towards single ingredient foods that don't contain or are not processed in any way shape or form so the idea of you getting your beans from a health food store where you can collect them in a glass jar pop them in your shelf which i highly recommend i'm going to check and show you guys uh, how i store my beans and my nuts and my seeds are all in glass jars from foods typically from the tempeh which is a complete protein that i have on a regular basis <clears throat> i'm not a vegan i'm not a vegetarian i'm just extremely whole foods approach i want people to understand foods before you pick a diet and with that meal in itself you can have 30 grams if not 40 grams of protein which will help you hit your protein targets will help you be more satiated and most certainly control your blood sugar levels it being low carbohydrates it being high in healthy fats and protein is what a one meal that i would recommend and do on the organic fitness program to individuals who have i suppose type 2 diabetes with that as well, it's about having regular meals at, at certain times that are suiting to your lifestyle with anyone who has diabetes. And that is really going to help you, I suppose, overall to live a healthier lifestyle. And remember that type 2 diabetes is actually lifestyle and food can, can be, with high lifestyle and food can most certainly be reversed. The thing about it is when you're eating highly processed foods, when you're eating sweets, we're not actually designed to eat excessive amount of processed foods we never were it's whole foods you should be eating it's single ingredient foods and that just meal right there firstly is something that i want people to incorporate into your diet that can help you i suppose overall live a healthier and happier life sex that's what i'm looking to do i'm looking for people to put this into practice there's no point in me passing this on to you and you don't put it into practice whether you read books whether you listen to audiobooks whether you have information being passed down to you by myself or anyone else that you trust the thing about it is put it into practice because you cannot gain the advantage of something you do not do that's so important that's key in fact and then going on to i suppose training uh, recommendations for continued progress is the next question and this really leads me on to another reason to, that i recommend added weight Add a weight whether it be dumbbells whether it be kettlebells whether it be you going doing home workouts or going to the gym or doing even classes, whatever stage that you're currently at, it's really important that when anybody that I train is knowing the fact that you can improve your insulin sensitivity. That is, I suppose, the body's, to break it down again, is your body's ability to use and produce energy uh, from the foods that you eat, converting carbohydrates to glycogen, and then as a result of that, having your body running at more efficient levels. That's done with a much higher rate when you train with other weights as opposed to just hit exercises or just running alone. That's just put that in your thinking cap the next time you're deciding to do a training and workout. I'm not anti-running. I'm not, not a major fan of it, but I do enjoy the benefits of, I suppose, weight training with insulin sensitivity. And on top of that, you have the advantage of progressively overloading because that's what's needed for continued progress. 
progressive low overloading is something that I'll touch on in this episode. It means the fact that you need to incrementally either increase the weights, but if you're at home and you only have two four kgs or two five kg dumbbells or two 2.5s, the whole idea of it is that's fine too. You don't have to increase the weights. It's easier to do that in the gym. You can go from the threes to the fours, the five to the six to the sevens to the you can continue on seven, five, 10, 15, you get the idea. And how do you do that at home is the question that he's asking me. What you can do is you can go from a 30 second squats, which are two dumbbells, squat and a press is a typical exercise that I use why you're using two muscle groups and two large muscle groups in the one exercise, that being the legs and that being the shoulders. There are two large muscle groups at the chest and the back muscles. So those are four main muscle groups. So with those individuals who are training at home, using the 30 second method and then the week after going up to the 40 seconds and then the week in, then after that uh, going up to the 50 seconds. The whole idea of it is that's changing up the stimulus enough for the body to continue its progress. And you would also, what you also could do is most certainly then change up the exercises, changing it from, I suppose, ones that you haven't done or even using those exercises that you have gotten from either your personal trainer or ones that you're following on YouTube or anywhere you can receive a workout plan. It's doing those exercises in a different, we'll call it ratio or my watch just beep. It tells me to get up and move. <laughs> I certainly will. Uh, after I record this podcast, thanks for reminding me. And uh, the last my train of thought. So the fact is that changing up the stimulus is so important, whether it be added weights, whether you're in the gym, or changing up the exercises that you're currently doing or the duration of them. Those are two ways to continually change up the stimulus so that you can continue with your progress. Anybody that I train on the organic fitness program gets tailored training. With, with that, in initially, you are starting off at, we'll call it again, as I said, maybe you're starting at 20 seconds, then you're going to 30, then you're going to 40, then you're going to 50. And exercises are specific to the individuals who have either injuries, who want to improve on, I suppose, more toned arms, improved muscle strength, and exercises that incorporate a lot of legs in their routines. And that's important to note that if you want to continue progress, you need to change up what you're doing. Too many people for six weeks, for 10 weeks, continue to do the same exercise at the same tempo, at the same pace, and expect a different result. That's the, and that's the definition of insanity. You have to change up something in this, about your training to stimulate the muscle, to tear more muscle fibers. When you tear more muscle fibers, you're able to change your body composition. You're able to build the muscle. There's a bicep flex. And I actually don't train biceps very rarely. It's just due to the fact that when I do back exercises, such as either a lat pull down, if I'm using the gym, and or a push up and a row, bringing the dumbbells in towards your chest, that's something that incorporates not only your back, but also your arms, your biceps. And if you are looking for more toned arms, I'd highly recommend you to start training uh, triceps because they're nearly double the size that your biceps are. So I'm just taking a drink of uh, ginger and warm water for drink in the morning. And that also is just to touch on that point, is something that I do recommend to people to aid in digestion, which is so important, which we're going coming on to here now. In organic fruits uh, coming into season, here we are coming into 2021, or if you're listening to this in the future, or in the now, you can actually listen to it in the future. It won't be 2021, I mean. So the <laughs> fruits that are coming into season right here, right now, and most certainly off the bat, are tomatoes, black currants, apples, and the more, one of the under, most underrated vegetables I do think at this moment in time is cabbage. So we'll go back up to the of tomatoes. I'm a major fan of tomatoes, just due to the fact that they're naturally sweet. They're completely different when you get them organically. And if you haven't tried an organic tomato, oh boy, you've got to try them. They contain fiber, which is good for your gut health. They contain an antioxidant called lycopene, which is a natural mood improver. Yes, yes, oh yeah. But not only that, it can actually help the body to deal with a suppose, excessive amount of sun. I do recommend sun to people, but for those of you that are not good at following orders and get too much of it. A little bit of redness can be reduced naturally with the likes of adding in tomatoes to your diet. And I do highly recommend, <clears throat> firstly, all the vegetables and fruits organically, but tomatoes will be on the dirty dozen, which means that they're 
one of the most heavily sprayed uh, fruits and vegetables that are produced each year. So those uh, studies are done each and every year and they typically end up in that top 10 range. Why? Because it's the chemicals that are sprayed on them end up on the skin and we typically eat the skin and the flesh of the tomatoes for uh, firstly for the fiber and its added benefits. I would much prefer you to possibly reach out. And remember, <clears throat> The tomatoes are sown in February and they're only coming into season as of July. The first ones you're going to get organically due to just in Ireland in a way, just due to the fact that I do I know there are American listeners, due to the fact that that's their long growing season. And for someone to expect any fruit or vegetable to be for 49 cent or a dollar or the equivalent in any country that you're writing in right now is nonsensical. Food shouldn't be cheap. Food takes a lot of time to grow. I grow some amounts and supply local shops and a couple of restaurants as well as being an online personal trainer and i just i just, I just like to show people like growing is not easy there's cuts there's bangs there's bruises there's welts and it's i suppose that comparison of fitness and health and uh, nothing good comes overnight and it sure as hell organic vegetables don't happen overnight either they take in time they take consistency it's the compound effect there's water and there's weeding there's sowing of seeds there's harvesting there's delivering and then people expect it for nothing to me, that's, it's actually upsetting a little bit. I'm a positive for that. We'll move on to the next item. We got black currants. Black currants are coming into a winner right now. They come from a bush. And they're, again, they're a single ingredient. And I highly recommend people to have either get black currant bushes. And then because of and black currants and blackberries are something that are going to come into black currants are typically from a bush, but black berries are found on briars and they only produce their fruit on the second year growth of briars so if you have a garden and <clears throat> you constantly are moving the briars you say oh well i've no uh, black berries in around my garden yeah if you left a couple of briars so it's okay to have a couple of little areas that are called wild and in creating biodiversity in your own garden and one thing i don't recommend to people is spraying the periphery edges of your garden please don't do that because it's the thing of i was actually doing a job with someone there recently at their house and we were saying oh my god the abundance of ladybirds he said this year and i said well now that i'm venturing yeah have you been doing any spraying around the patios or in and around the veg patch and he was like no i haven't and i was like that's the main one of the main differences that you've changed up in i suppose the growing habits with my mentoring and coaching <clears throat> i called call to his house show him and his family and how to grow uh, their own fruits and vegetables there's apple trees which also is something that I want people to do. There is inevitably black currants. There's more ladybirds. Ladybirds are actually so beneficial. They do things behind the scenes that you don't even see. They eat the green fly around your apple trees and around your garden. And green fly typically uh, are found on tomatoes. They're typically found on the underside of leaves of fruit bushes and your apple trees, all inevitably controlled with biological insects such as ladybirds. But if you're constantly spraying the periphery of your garden, they, that's where they live and live on the underside of the leaves as, long as, as well as nettles. They also live typically and found there first time, first uh, in spring. And if you're spraying off for nettles where you live in the country or you see people spraying nettles, which are natural high vitamin C, high antihistamine foods, you inevitably are killing the area, the habitat that they live in. It's just a small worth, um, no, worth noting for anybody who is looking to, I suppose, have more biodiversity and grow a little bit of your own. Nature has been here long before us and I'll be here long after us. And it's so important to look after, I suppose, not only the insects, but also the soil. Roundup is a carcinogenic. It's killing not only the weed, but also the soil. There's microorganisms found in your gut, I'm a major believer in, and talk about that on a regular basis, but it's also found in the likes of the soil there's time there's more microbes when you lift up a palm of soil or dirt in your hands than there is in your whole body there's millions and trillions of them and they do a lot of work and break it down foods and materials so they can be i suppose used and taken up and utilized by the plants and vegetables that there's that they're growing in and then i suppose getting back to the things that are coming into season apples apples are a natural Prebiotic, prebiotics are food. I think, for example, prebiotics and probiotics. So first, they break that down. Probiotics, I've talked about this in a separate episode, are fermented foods. And 
prebiotics are foods that are high in fiber that naturally increase the microorganisms in your stomach. So apples, again, are found on that dirty dozen list each and every year are so important to get and add to your diet. They're high in vitamin C, that we'll touch on very soon. And the final fruit vegetable that is recommended to come into season by myself is cabbage. Cabbage is part of the brassica family related to kale, related to broccoli, that's superfood, but it's underrated. It's majorly uh, left behind just due to the fact that people don't know what to do with it. And I don't recommend you to boil it and steam it to the death like Granny Murph, my poor old Granny, if she's listening now, fair play to you. Um, <laughs> she used to cook, she used to, she still cooks cabbage and maybe excessively. And that's just taken away from some of the benefits. So I do recommend people to even grow your own cabbage, get an organic cabbage and make sauerkraut out of it. I have a YouTube video on how exactly how to make it and you can even add spices to it. It makes it a kimchi. These are things that we done previously to store, I suppose, fermented foods for the likes of the winter because we weren't able to otherwise have fridges and bring in these brassica and fermented foods all the way through the winter so that we can have a healthier immune system. That's what fermented foods do. They improve your immune system. So whether you're having kefir, it's also fermented food. Whether you're having kombucha, fermented drink, I also recommend. Holo is one that's, and Synergy are two Irish brands, which you can also find anyone at all. But just again, making sure it's organic. And those are things that I have on a regular basis in my diet. And I recommend to people that cabbage is something, and if, cabbage and with the, it being fermented and made into sauerkraut or kimchi is something that i recommend for overall health and it's something you can do at home it's that can be done with family members make it a little bit more enjoyable and that's the things that i do i used to cook with my mother when i was growing up definitely didn't cook uh, kimchi or <laughs> anything fermented it was more scones and brown bread it's a tradition in my family and why i'm a firm believer in i suppose homemade either oat bread for those people who uh, can get uh, gluten-free bread, who can't tolerate uh, oats, or can't tolerate grain in the brown bread. But it's something that I suppose has been brought down for generations. And another reason why I suppose I have a little bit of cooking in my background, but I literally learned how to cook from YouTube way back when, when I went to Australia and it was chicken and rice. And I barely got sick of that off the bat. I'm going to say within three weeks of eating chicken, broccoli and rice, because that's all I could cook. One pot it went into. I still brought that through. I'm a one pan kind of man at the minute. And you can check out any of my uh, YouTube videos on those meals that I make. And some of the meals are eight minutes. Eight minutes, lads. Don't tell me you don't have time. Eight minutes is nothing. And I suppose gut health being massively important and can be something that can improve your mood. Why? Because uh, 90% of that serotonin is produced in your gut. These things are just kind of small. But again, small and incremental improvements in your diet, in your lifestyle, in your training are exactly what you're looking for. You don't have to we call it change up your whole life, change up your whole training from one to the other. The thing is, once you start doing smaller things, it's the compound effect that's going to really snowball and make the big differences in the grand scheme of things. And then the last one we're going to touch on in this week's episode is should I take a vitamin C tablet? So these vitamin C tablets and supplements are something that people and advertisers where you see it online or you go into a shop or pass a chemist they say immune boosters vitamin c tablets take them now sail on i've seen them advertised for 60 euro 70 euro 80 euro and then they say there's a sale i'm going to tell you every vitamin and mineral is found in whole foods and i've no problem with people asking these questions i love people asking questions but this to me taking a vitamin such as vitamin c or multivitamin before you improve your diet is nonsensical to me. You talk about vitamin C. Where is vitamin C found? Every dark leafy green. But even before we go into that, okay, I'm going to tell you the vitamin C thing that most people say maybe might think of firstly to say an orange. Okay, oranges don't grow in Ireland right now. They might with this temperature that has been, we call it continuously for the last two weeks. I'm literally melting in the heat. But in on top of that, there's the most certain food I'm recommending is a pepper. A pepper has your daily has over your daily recommended amount of vitamin C per day. And that daily recommended amount of vitamin C per day is 90 milligrams. So 90 milligrams is the below, is the just is the lower end of the spectrum. You can go up to 2,000 milligrams. And how do you get that from other foods other than peppers? Most certainly would recommend 
spinach, kale, other dark leafy greens such as chard. And when you do that, 100 grams of that, which I recommend you add into a meal, whether it be lunch, chop it up, put it in a frying pan and add extra virgin olive oil. That's going to increase the absorption of fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. All those things are good for your skin health, improves your blood flow, even added advantages with fiber. So if you're getting them from the chard, you have the added advantage of magnesium. Most people are taking magnesium tablets. Again, I've touched on and separate things that are high in magnesium, all dark leafy greens, most certainly hemp seeds and everything I have, beans and lentils are high in magnesium. Those things you can add into your diet and I recommend those. Again, uh, that lentils is actually really good because it's a low GI food and it contains beta carotene, which is an antioxidant. Those things are so important to add to your diet for your vitamin C. And then another thing, that the K is going to give you is antioxidant sulfurophane because that's actually related to the cabbage and rocket arugula, 100 grams of that, all and spinach typically are going to get you 30 milligrams, which is 30% of your daily recommended amount of vitamin C. Then, in on top of that, I also have on a regular basis two kiwis before bed. Why? Because they naturally increase uh, my melatonin. Melatonin is a sleep hormone. I'm a major believer in sleep. Why? Because it being one of the pillars of health. And when you're getting things organically, that actually can aid in a good night's sleep. These things are all small, but again, it's so important to your diet. The vitamin C from your kiwis, two of those uh, is typically going to hit you about 90 uh, milligrams, which again is the minimum requirement of your overall vitamin C content for the day. And those are things you can get, I suppose, in either Lidl's or Adley's and try to get them, I suppose, organically again. Why? Because you typically, well, I'm going to tell you, I eat the skin of the kiwi. For those of you who have seen it on my Instagram, or my Facebook stories, it's again, most of the beneficial compounds such as those antioxidants are found either just below the skin. So if you're using it or scooping it out with a spoon, get as much of the good stuff as you can. And I like to maximize the benefits of the foods that I eat because I'm, I suppose, a whole food approach and whole being everything and inclusive of the skin. So those, I suppose, would be the foods that I recommend for you to hit your daily recommended amount of vitamin C before you take a supplement. I have no problem with people taking supplements. and I have people on the pro program taking on supplements on a regular basis, but please eat whole foods. And the reasons why people recommend supplements first, whether it be on social media or in your health food stores, is because people make money off that. People make money off supplements, whether it's some influencer who says, I'm trying to hold something. Buy this supplement. This is what I take. And my skin is great. My immune system has never been stronger. And they say that to you. They put a smile on their face. But the thing is, they come from whole foods. And whole foods such as kale, spinach, broccoli, kiwis, peppers, all these whole foods, not a lot of money is made off that. And people out there are trying to make a quick buck. And that's inevitably what they're trying to do. They're trying to fool you into, I suppose, getting more getting them, getting you to buy their product. And I'm going to tell you, I don't make a huge amount of money. I don't even have a huge amount of money from this podcast. And I suppose I want people just to listen to this podcast, to listen to the beneficial information that's 100% free. I don't have ads on this. I've mentioned products such as New and Naturals that I have a discount for. I mentioned blue light blocking glasses that again, things that I do. And as a result of that, those are, the hemp seeds are a whole food. I don't recommend supplements on a, on, an, on a more regular basis. I do take a protein supplement that again, that is uh, suited to me is plant-based, but I must stress to you for the most part, I want people to be happier and healthier from single ingredient foods that you can get local, that you can get fresh and that you can get organic. Why? Because that's the gold standard. It's about improving your diet and improving your lifestyle through whole food approach. I want people to exercise more regularly. I want people to reach their fitness goals. I want people to understand foods before they pick a diet. And that's 100%. So it's coming from a person who didn't understand foods, who was unsure about training and didn't know how to grow, uh, I mean, just, never mind, a spud or a salad before he started and went uh, to college. I have a master's degree in organic, organic horticulture. I suppose had uh, a poor understanding of foods just because we weren't taught it in school. And I'm passing on this information to you 100% free. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to put into practice this 
golden nuggets that you've received in this podcast and or pass it on to someone else that would really help me out to, I suppose, further get this podcast in order. So if you could spend 30 seconds either to give me a review or share it on your stories on Instagram, on Facebook or on TikTok or any other social media platform that's out there, that would really help me. So I suppose that's this week's episode of the Coleman Pro Organic Fitness Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Going through, I suppose, foods I recommend high uh, to improve your uh, diet for people with diabetes or just in a general improving your diet, whole foods approach. Training I recommend continued stressor, either changing up the tempo, increasing the time duration and or increasing the weights are three ways that I recommend. Other fruits coming into season, black currants, blackberries, apples, cabbage, and most certainly all in season cabbage uh, related, broccoli, kale, and spinach, and chard as well. And then should I take a vitamin C tablet? Please eat whole foods first. Peppers, they're going to get you there. Minimum requirements. Kiwis, spinach, kale, you betcha. All in season. Get on it. And as I always finish this podcast, stay tuned. Stay classy and keep it organic.